Hey everyone, thank you for, for joining me. Um, ignore the shimmering light effect that is around my face. Uh, I saw this filter on the uh, MacBook webcam and I was interested in trying it. I regret my decision, but at this point I've committed to it, so I'm just stuck with it. Uh, I just wanted to talk about some of the elitism that I uh, encountered when I was DC, uh, when I was in DC. Um, sorry, I don't know why that sounded weird. Um, but anyway, uh, while I was in DC, I, I encountered a lot of smart cookies from Johns Hopkins, Georgetown, George Washington University, etc. And it's, uh, it's almost insulting how many times people ask me, it's not, it wasn't insulting when they asked me what school I went to, it was insulting when they asked me, um, <laughs> if I was serious, like if there was a punchline when I told them I went to Rutgers University, um, you know, Rutgers is well known, right? It's a renowned school, but at the same time, a lot of the people who are uh, in management in DC come from the good schools, the, 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 the ones who are going to Harvard and then developing policies. They're the ones who are chief of staff to, you know, someone important. Um, you know, your, your pedigree matters, right? Your, your actual pedigree, right? Like who your parents are, who your family is, like there is nepotism in DC and it's not, uh, you know, I'm not really sharing anything that isn't known, unfortunately. That's just every capital in the world is going to have that problem where, you know, there is nepotism. Uh, but, w but more than that, like, the school you go to matters. Um, it's actually huge. It's a huge deal. So if you go to an Ivy League, you're going to do well. And if you go to a state school, you're going to have a hard time. Um, I wouldn't say that there was a lot of barriers for me in D.C., um, but it was definitely worth noting. I think given the credentials I have, given the experience and knowledge that I have, given how I present myself, how I handle negotiations and presentations, how I um, develop relationships and manage expectations and stakeholders, um, I should have definitely gone a lot further. And that sounds a little bit bitter or sounds a little bit, um, I guess like I have some sort of victim mentality. But, you know, if you look at if you look at what I can execute on, if you look at what I can deliver, you definitely see a disconnect between what I was able to achieve and what I'm capable of. Meaning I'm, I'm capable of doing more than I did. Uh, and I present myself well, I can speak intelligently on my value, my deliverables. So yeah, being in DC, I very much felt the sting of, um, what it feels like to be among the elite. Uh, I learned that, you know, my school name, which means a lot, it, Rutgers has a great reputation. I will not, you know, I will not, um, I will not diminish the school. It's a great school. It's a great state school. It's a great school for the value. But when I was in DC, I mean, I might as well have gone to a community college or frankly, I might as well have not even gone to college at all. Uh, it was especially at the at the at the patent office. I mean, there's a lot of lawyers there, and I will not insult the agency. I will not say this was a systemic issue that every employee was rude to me. But more than once, uh, people asked me, like, you went to college at Rutgers, but where did you do grad school? Like, maybe you went somewhere better for grad school. And I would tell them, no, I I just went to Rutgers for for undergrad and. Um, like I don't have any any graduate degrees, and they would just look at me like, "How did he get here? How is he in in management? How is he, you know, how does he have a portfolio, or how is he in charge of these initiatives that are very visible?" Um, and you know, ego aside, like it definitely hurt personally, but I was also like, professionally speaking, I'm I. It was definitely eye-opening. I mean, I was aware that, you know, the school you go to matter. Like, Ivy Leagues do have a value. Big-name schools do have a value. But it's a gradient. It's a scale, right? So if you didn't go to an Ivy League, at least you went to some good, known university. But in D.C., it was really like you either went to a top-20 school or you just didn't even go to college. So that is, you know, there's nothing nothing too dirty to share, No, nothing scandalous um, but elitism in DC exists, even if people want to pretend it's not, even if they want to, 
you know, they do like to spin the tale that it's a meritocracy, that if you work hard, you'll make your way. I mean, that's the American dream. And I will say this, if you work hard, you'll do fine. I'm specifically talking about basically as you move up into management, um, it becomes a lot more difficult. It becomes a lot more difficult because you're really expected to have some school behind you, some brand name that they can flash. Uh, agencies, departments, um, you know, committees, what have you, all, any group, they like to show that they're being staffed or led by someone from, from a big school, right? So I found myself having a difficult time where I'm trying to lead with, and, and be leveraged as an asset within governmental agencies, and I could tell that there was some sort of carrying capacity. Essentially, they were like, you know, you have a limit, and it was never said officially said to me, but you can tell, you can intuit through conversations and implications, read between the lines. You can see when, uh, when your resume is great, but your, your education, people ask you basically, are you planning to continue education? Are you planning? To, and if so, where? Um, they're giving you an opportunity to basically name a bigger, better school than the one you have on your resume. So I was asked a couple of times when interviewing at, at other agencies or even, even um, private groups. Like I, I, would, I would interview at uh, private enterprises that you know, conducted a lot of business with the government, like managing a large account a large federal account and they would ask me you know do you have an mba no if so are you planning to get one from like you know they would then they would they would name like the m7 schools and i was just like what no i'm planning to get my mba from from rutgers um and very quickly you know when someone when you're having a great conversation and someone throws a casual question out there and you answer it casually and then the conversation ends kind of quickly after that and it hasn't really lost its momentum or it hasn't ended organically you can tell that you gave maybe some incorrect answer uh so there were there were some conversations where you know there were private uh, vendors who you know deal they do a lot of business with government and i said look i've worked on one end of federal government i've been the customer i said let me you know i've been the one receiving their services let me go to the other side and become the provider and i i could see it was very clear that they they wanted someone who went to a big name school to represent their interests and and deal with governmental agencies because they knew that governmental agencies had a value on the the school that you went to. Um, so that was definitely very eye opening because in the rest of the U.S. I will say this, um, you know, in older companies, if you have an MBA or if you went to a good school, it matters. But a lot of companies care more about your experiences. What can you speak to? What what value can you add to the company? Um, you know, if you have a degree, it helps. If you went to a good school, it helps. Absolutely. I won't say it doesn't help or it doesn't matter at all. But I, I would say that more and more companies are shifting away from that emphasis where, you know, you have to go to a top school or you have to have some top degree. You have to have like an MBA. Um, you know, there are people who are leading companies who don't, you know, who don't necessarily have like an Harvard, a Harvard MBA or, you know, an MPA from Johns Hopkins or anything like that. Uh, but it was it was definitely an experience being in DC, dealing with uh, the competition, dealing with the elitism, um, and just seeing how people in DC behave and, and see the rest of us. Like I, you know, I'd, someone asked me why I went to Rutgers, and I just mentioned, you know, obviously it was a financial decision. I mean, uh, dollar for dollar, I think Rutgers probably has one of the best reputation in the U.S. Uh, it's up there with like the University of California system where. You know, you get a, a great education for the for the amount of money you pay. Um, Rutgers is also like a public Ivy, so the education I received there was definitely top notch. Um, but I I remember someone was like, "Oh, why didn't you just go to?" And then I think they named like a really really expensive school, like like an I think they named an Ivy League or something that was like top twenty. And I was just like, "Why? How could you casually put a state school up there with that school? Like that's not even nearly as affordable." So. They're definitely very far removed. There's a lot of privilege. There's a lot of wealth. Um, and because there's a lot of good schools in the D.C. area, a lot of people from D.C. end up going to these really good universities and then going into government, getting into these high levels. Uh, not to say they don't work for it, but uh, I think if you didn't go to a top school, you have to work a lot harder, not a little bit harder, but a lot harder to prove yourself and show that 
you know, you would be a valuable asset versus, uh, you know, having gone to a public school like I did. And this is just my experience, but I, I found it very surprising uh, given the experience I bring with me, the diverse background that I have, the different, you know, perspectives I'm able to bring to the table, um, and the way I'm able to own and drive, you know, large IT initiatives. So, you know, IT traditionally does not care too much. It's not too stringent or strict when it comes to education. There's a low, uh, you know, bar of entry when it comes to tech. A lot of people are get, able to get into tech. So when I was in, in government and I was in DC, it was very surprising that I'm working in tech, which a lot of people are just doing boot camps or pivoting away from, you know, non-STEM non degrees. People are doing biology or psychology or history and then taking, you know, uh, you know, IT courses and getting into the field. So I know that's what it was like in the private sector, especially the startup world. So when I'm in DC and everyone is very suit and tie, did you go to Wharton or this and that? I was like, that is extremely surprising. Like <laughs> IT should just be about experience or what you know. Instead, it's very, a lot of emphasis, very heavy on pedigree. Like who do you know or, or who are you related to? What school did you go to that just, the fact that not only do degrees matter, but what type of degree, what level of degree, and more, you know, most importantly, what school you went to, that that's something that kind of left a negative taste in my mouth. And uh, it's something I warn people about that they want to go into DC and just, you know, get involved in, in helping people, you know, governmental services or work for an NGO or nonprofit, something. Um, you know, I tell them that, look, D.C. is just like Hollywood or L.A. Like everyone goes there to become an actor and same goes for D.C. A lot of people are going there to help out or get involved, do something, um, you know, do their part. And, you know, they think that, OK, I have an MPA from like a SUNY school or some public university and I'm just going to go in and they're going to give me the keys to the kingdom. And I warn them that you're in for a rude awakening. It's not going to be like that at all. Like, unless you got your MPA from, like, the Kennedy School or whatever from, like, Harvard, I said you're going to have an extremely difficult time. Uh, even if you have experience, uh, even if you've, basically, even if you've done the work or you're over, like, you've done more than the sort of work you're looking for, the elitism in D.C. is real. It's present. Um, and I, I don't I don't want to say that's deliberate. I don't want to say that's systemic. It's just something I, I personally experience in certain circles, in certain roles, at certain enterprises. Um, and this is, I've been removed from D.C. for about a year plus. So this experience is kind of outdated. Maybe things have changed. Uh, and it also just, again, might be specific to the sort of roles uh, or people I was interacting with. But I don't think it's discussed enough that... Uh, not everyone can make it in D.C. Not everyone can get involved in government or things that are government adjacent. Uh, even if you have the education, where you went to school matters um, more than I think anywhere else in the U.S. I think it's very specific to D.C. because I have not encountered this in uh, New York or Texas, anywhere else. I know MBAs are encouraged and companies do prefer top level MBAs, but uh, I was just very surprised that the yeah, undergraduate education at a, at a very fine university uh, as well as the work experience I had was almost considered null when I was interacting with with a lot of entities in the DC area.